Okay, here we're going to look at the, the Euclidean algorithm and its proof. So this is a method of finding the GCD given any two natural numbers. So let's look at the precise statement. So suppose we have A and B natural numbers. If we repeatedly perform the division algorithm, so we divide A by B, we get A equals B times the first quotient plus, plus the first remainder. And then we send B down and it's uh, playing the role of A, and then we have B equals the first remainder times the second quotient plus the second remainder, and if we continually do that, then not only do we eventually get zero as the remainder, but the last non-zero remainder happens to be the GCD of the original two numbers. So, let's look at the proof. So the first thing that we need to prove is that this process ends. So how can we do that? Well, let's notice that the sequence given by R1, R2, R3, and so on and so forth. So this is a sequence of natural numbers and is decreasing. So since it's decreasing, it has to truncate somewhere by the well-ordering principle. So it will truncate at its smallest non or smallest positive value. And so that value will be r sub n minus 1. So it's decreasing. So thus, um, it truncates, say, at Rn minus 1. So in other words, that's the last non-zero element of this sequence. Okay, good. So the next thing we need to prove, so the next thing we need to prove is that this last positive remainder is actually the GCD. So we'll first prove that it's a CD, that is it's a common divisor, and then we'll show that it's the greatest such common divisor. So let's make this claim. We're going to uh, show that Rn minus 1 divides A and Rn minus 1 divides B. So it's a common divisor. And how can we do that? So this equation, so this equation right here shows that Rn minus 1 divides Rn minus 2. And then moving up from there, we see that uh, that will show that Rn minus 1 divides Rn minus 1 and Rn minus 2, so it has to divide Rn minus 3. And then all the way to the top, it'll divide A and B. So these will all fall from each other. So this means Rn minus 1 divides Rn minus 3, which implies dot, 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 that Rn minus 1 divides A and Rn minus 1 divides B. Okay, good. So that means this last non-zero remainder is a common divisor of A and B. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll prove that it's the, le it's the greatest such common divisor. Okay, so now we're ready to finish off the proof. So I've reminded ourselves that this sequence of remainders actually ends. In other words, this Rn minus 1 exists, the last non-zero remainder. And also, we've proven that Rn minus 1 is a common divisor of A and B. That is, it divides A and it divides B. So now we want to show that it's in fact the greatest common divisor. So how can we do that? Well, let's suppose that D divides A and D divides B. In other words, we have another common divisor of A and B. And then our goal, which we can put at the bottom, will be so D divides Rn minus 1, which means thus Rn minus 1 equals the GCD of A and B. So if we have another common divisor, then it must divide the greatest common divisor. So now we just have to fill in the middle. And so we'll do that by this sequence of equations that we've built.
So if D divides A and D divides B, so that means that D divides A minus B times Q1, right? Um, but that's the same thing as saying D divides R1. So D divides the first non-zero remainder, but that implies that D divides B minus R1 times Q1, but that means that D divides R2. So by this equation. And so now we can see how we're going. Now we can go towards the bottom and we'll end up with D divides Rn minus 1, which tells us that Rn minus 1 is in fact the GCD of A and B.